This screencast is going to cover payroll taxes. And you'll see that there's some basic information in the chapter, plus there's also an appendix to the chapter. And this is one of the appendices that I do test. I think it's really useful information for accounting majors and business, uh, future business owners or current business owners to have a good working knowledge. So we're going to spend a little time on payroll taxes, and hopefully this screencast will um, enhance your knowledge of that. So I've got an outline here. We'll just start from the top. Um, so first we're going to talk about the employee uh, payroll withholding. And we'll see that there are some required taxes and then there are also some optional taxes or withholdings. So we're going to talk through those and see how many of them are calculated. So required for each employee, and I encourage you to take a look at a recent pay stub if you have one of, um, at home that you can take a look at. I think um, a lot of this will make more sense once you've viewed it on your own pay stub. So for each employee, uh, we have some required payroll taxes that the employer is required to withhold. So they withhold that and then they remit that directly to the federal and state governments uh, by um, doing that electronically through the electronic um, tax payment systems of the governments. Um, they can also write a check and they also have to prepare payroll tax returns. Those are generally done quarterly and annually. So. Starting from the top, as far as the required payroll taxes, the first is FICA, and FICA has two components. One is OASDI, Old Age Survivors Disability Insurance, I believe it stands for. It's also known as Social Security, and that makes up 6.2% or 6 of your wages up to $117,000. Uh, that's the limit in 2014. 2015 is a little higher. I use the uh, 2014 limit because that's what's discussed in your textbook. There's also a Medicare tax, and that funds the Medicare program, like the Social Security tax funds the Social Security system. So we're paying in right now as wage earners, and those benefits are going to current retirees. So the Medicare limit is, or the Medicare tax is 1.45% of your wages, and there's no limit to that. I've seen W-2s from executives where they've got you know, wages of a couple million a year. The Medicare tax is much higher than the Social Security tax because, again, the Social Security tax is capped on an annual basis. So you'll see that all payroll taxes run on a calendar year. So once a high wage earner uh, earns 117,000 in a calendar year, we quit withholding the Medicare or the Social Security tax, and so they will see a bump in their take-home pay when we no longer have to withhold the Social Security tax. Okay, so those are the two components of FICA. As you'll often hear, FICA referred to as Social Security, but there are really two components to FICA, the Social Security portion and the Medicare portion. We're also, as employers, required to withhold federal income tax if necessary. Uh, the amount depends on information provided by the employee on a Form W-4. That's normally a form that you fill out when you go to work at an employer. Um, and if you have some, you know, life circumstances that change or if you find that you're, you know, owing too much at April 15th or that you have a big refund, you might want to modify that W-4. You would go to your payroll or HR department to update that form. And you can update that uh, whenever you need to. But generally, most employees do it when they start working somewhere and they don't amend it a whole lot unless their employer asks them to. So. You might see on a W-4 that you indicate if you're married or if you're single, and you also would um, find on there um, how many exemptions that you want to claim. The higher number of exemptions you claim, the less is going to be withheld from your paycheck. If you earn very little or you have a lot of exemptions, you may not have any federal income tax withheld. So again, that's going to depend on the information on the W-4 and payroll software figures that based on us, um, we the payroll staff entering the information that's on the W-4. The computer software then um, refers to tables issued by the IRS on how much to withhold on a given salary. Likewise, the state of Colorado has a state income tax, and currently that's 4.63 percent of income. So like the federal withholding we may or may not have to withhold on a state basis. That again is going to be dependent also on the information on the W-4. So these are all required. Employers don't have an option on these. 
Again, there may not be any tax withheld on these two, but that strictly is going to be based on the information the employee provides. The second category of withholding, insurance, retirement, union. So there may be a lot of other programs that you as an employee are eligible to pay in um, towards, and those would also be withheld from your paycheck. I'd like to walk through an example here. So Lisa Smart is a new employee. For December, her salary is $4,000. So this is what the payroll calculation is going to look like for Lisa. Her gross pay is $4,000. And again, she's salary. If she was hourly, she would receive wages instead. So it's both, both are forms of compensation. Salary is just a fixed amount per year divided by 12, and the employee receives that each month. These are the withhold, withholdings. Here's the OASDI, aka Social Security. So we take the $4,000 times 6.2%. Medicare is the 4,000 times 1.45%. Federal income tax withholding, I just made some assumptions here. I assume that we needed to withhold at 20% of her gross pay. And state income tax, I assumed 5% of gross pay. Health insurance is an optional deduction. Generally, her employer would share some of the cost of that. So they're requiring her to pay in $65 per pay period. So the net pay, which is what you see on your paycheck or the amount that ends up in your bank account if you have direct deposit, is $26.29. That's a lot of money out of a 4,000 paycheck. And I'm sure you've had the experience as I have. You get hired and you're told that you're gonna make X dollars per hour and you get your first paycheck and it's like, what happened? It's all of these withholdings that um, bring that net pay down okay so we've got this pay information up here let's take a look and see what it looks like in journal entry format so the gross pay is going to be the debit to salary expense and then we're going to set up liabilities for all of these categories of withholdings that we did so and I recommend uh, for payroll taxes setting one up for each category if you have the ability to do that. If you're using a system such as QuickBooks Payroll, that's what I use for the clients that I process payroll for, it's going to keep track of that in a separate payroll system, and it'll just show payroll tax liabilities um, on your balance sheet. So I, I like to keep track of these separately if I'm doing it um, myself with the journal entry, because then it's really easy to see that I've, um, when I've prepared the payroll tax return, that the numbers are correct. You'll see the final credit here is cash or salaries payable. That basically equates to the net pay. And the reason I have cash or salaries payable, if we're paying the employee that day, the credit would be to cash. If we're accruing the salaries, such as she's earned them this month, but I'm not going to pay them until early next month, then my credit would be to the salaries payable account. Okay. Let's take a look at the second um, part of payroll taxes. This is for the employer payroll taxes. So up here, the first part, we're just dealing with employees. We haven't even gotten to the employer's obligation yet. So that's what we're going to talk about now. So take a look at this. The employer is also responsible for FICA taxes. And the calculations are identical to the employees. So the employee pays half of these taxes. The employer pays half of these taxes. And the calculations are exactly the same. So for Social Security, once you reach the 117000 you don't have to pay in anymore if you're the employer. And uh, that's what I like about this. You figure, once, you figure the employee's withholding, and then you've already got the employer's uh, Social Security and Medicare tax that they owe. There are also a couple of other employer taxes that the employee is not obligated to pay. The first is called FUTA. That stands for Federal Unemployment Tax. And that ends up being 0.8% of the first 10,000 wages for each calendar year. As you can see, that's going to be a pretty small number. Um, what the, this tax does, um, it again resets every year. So once an employee earns 10,000 in a calendar year, we don't withhold anymore or we don't pay in any more of this tax. We come around to the next year, we start all over again until the employee reaches 10,000 in wages and the employer then owes that tax and would pay it in. And it actually assists the state with paying unemployment benefits. So if you've been unemployed and you receive unemployment compensation, most of that is coming from the state. Some of that will come from the federal government. And so speaking of that, 
this third employer payroll tax is called SUDA, and that's state unemployment tax. That's going to vary a great deal by state and employer. Here in Colorado, it applies to the first $11,800 of wages. And again, it resets once we get to a new calendar year. Um, I said varies by state. So each state administers their own plan. And the employer, based on how many employees they let go in the previous year, their experience rate, their tax will increase if they have a lot of layoffs and they let a lot of people go. If they have very little turnover, you'll find that their tax rate is quite low. Okay, so let me work through an example here of the employer's part of the payroll taxes. So we've got FICA, we've got the OASDI and the Medicare. You can see those are identical to what we did up here. Okay, exact same amount. And then we've got FUTA and we've got SUDA. So again, the FUTA is 4,000 times the 0.8%. Be careful that you put enough zeros in there. Again, it's a small tax. SUDA, 4,000 times 2%, and I just assumed that rate. So a couple things I wanted to point out. This $418 in my example is an additional expense to the employer on top of what the salary is paid to the employee. So it's expensive to have employees, not just for the wages, but for um, taxes and benefits. These are just taxes. We haven't even included if they pay part of health insurance or retirement or anything else. Um, these are simply just the basic required payroll taxes that an employer is responsible for paying. Here's what the journal entry looks like. We debit payroll tax expense, and then we credit these um, liability accounts. And um, that's it. So there's an employee's journal entry that we did up here. Just remember that. And if you're asked to do the employer's tax journal entry, that's what it looks like here. And we put all of these taxes into payroll tax expense for the 418. I hope this has been helpful. Talk to you next time.